Hey guys, it's an Anukshuk. We're hanging out in English Bay, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. It's just a beautiful, beautiful day. And we've actually come from West Van or North Van? Uh, North Van first and then uh, over to West Van. And Sweet. Then, uh, over the bridge. Lionsgate Vancouver. Bridge. And that's where the headquarters are for Ohm. This is the founder, Michael DeVisser. And I've reviewed the Quest. Now we're looking at the cruise. Very excited about this bike. I mean, it's, it's first of all, beautiful. I'm loving this like satin metallic paint job. This is graphite gray. They also have kind of a maroon color. And what you'll notice is it has the integrated battery, mid-drive motor, so excellent balance, a very efficient drive system, quick release front and rear. They're actually using through axles, so 15 millimeters up front, 12 millimeters in the rear, which gives you a really stiff performance. That's something you'd usually see on like mountain bikes, but it's nice to see it on e-bikes where you might have a little bit of extra weight going on. And sometimes, especially with a wave style step through with a 16 inch standover height right here, you can get some frame flex, but check out what they've done. First of all, the down tube really thick, gives you that extra uh, strength, but then they've got this gusset that just beautifully fades in right here. Got the nice smooth welds and then another section of additional aluminum alloy right here. Gives you that frame strength so you aren't getting frame flex and check it out two sets of bottle cage bosses right there. Very nice uh, double walled fenders, which means they're a little bit thicker. You can see right here the additional aluminum alloy there. So they, they really don't rattle a whole lot. They're not gonna be buzzing on the side of your tire. Uh, and there's enough strength to support, in part, this rear rack. Rack time, you've got the quick connect system, standard gauge tubing, so you can have panniers. We've got a little bungee loop down here. We've got integrated lights, really nice. It's like design, two LEDs on this rear light. I think this is like 60 lux, 210 mil or lumen headlight up here. And it's right where I would want it. So many times there are bikes that have suspension forks and stuff, and there's a little bit of bounce that can happen with the light. And it's just not as high up as this, nor are they as bright. So there's a lot of really kind of upgraded, like high quality, longer lasting, more durable. And you might say, well, there isn't a suspension fork, but they do have, you know, I mentioned the, the through axles and stuff. So it feels solid. This bike isn't vibrating all over the place, making noise. And we've got these Schwabby Big Ben balloon tires, which give you excellent comfort. I've actually felt great coming over here. These are 27.5 by 2.0 inches width. Love that they've got that reflective sidewall stripe going on. Schwabby makes great stuff. And then they're connected to these Alex rims. You've got these little eyelets right here that add some strength. Nice black spokes, black, black rim, black hubs. Everything is tied in beautifully. It's just a, it's just a gorgeous bike. Um, I've, I've really enjoyed seeing the progression. Uh, Ohm used to do more like hub motors and stuff. And now we've got the, the mid drive. You can see it on this side. This is the Shimano E6100. Very efficient, compact. I think it's 168 millimeter um, like Q factor. So it's, it's narrower and it's just more compact and it fits in nicely. When you're looking at the drivetrain side of the bike, it fades right away because we've got this aluminum alloy, kind of a bash guard is what I would call that. And that helps if you have pants. I am using like a little reflective ankle band to keep my pants from touching anything. But even if they were touching, they wouldn't touch that, that chain, which might have some uh, lubricant on it, something like that. So I appreciate the attention to detail there. Also narrow wide chain ring. So the teeth, you go from like a narrow one to a wider one, and that fits more perfectly in between these chain links. So you aren't gonna get chain drop. And again, just look at that. There's extra height on that bash guard. Really nice, clean drivetrain. Something I think about a lot. Even though I wouldn't be off-roading with this bike, it feels comfortable and stable enough to do some gravel trail riding. And then in those cases, again, the chain should be in good, good shape. Nice aluminum alloy, Welgo platform pedals with adjustable pins, extra wide. So you're not gonna slip off accidentally coming back to that possibility of rain, especially in Vancouver, Pacific Northwest. Excellent drivetrain back here, 10 speed. This is a 11 to 36 tooth. So pretty good spread of gears, perfect for class one up to 20 mile per hour, 32 kilometer per hour performance. Lots of little steps on the way up and the Shimano Dior derailleur with the one-way clutch. So you can put it in the off position down like that. It's gonna make it easier to service this. Uh, maybe you're lubricating the chain or adding a new chain or you're taking the rear wheel off. You can, you can kind of loosen the springs and then you put it in the on position. It's gonna keep things from bouncing around as much, which is really nice. I used to only see those on like mountain bikes. Uh, but more and more city bikes are doing it because it's just, it's nice. It's sort of like, why not? It makes the bike 
perform better. And then through here, you can see on the other side right there, these are TRP Zurich quad piston calipers with 180 millimeter hydraulic disc brake rotors. Front and rear, there it is again, quad piston. So a little bit more surface area, very, very easy to actuate these. These are three finger like levers. You can just use one finger if you want or two, but it's nice to have up to three if you're someone who, you know, maybe there's a little bit more weight on this. You've got up to 55 pounds back here and you could be potentially a larger rider. Just nice to be able to stop effectively, especially with an e-bike. This bike does weigh about 49.7 pounds. So not bad staying under that 50 pound mark, especially with aluminum alloy fenders and lights and all that, you know, it's this tapered head tube right here through axles, bigger disc brake. I mean, that's, that all adds weight. Um, Shimano does have one of the lighter drive systems on the market which helps but still just the way that they've designed the frame to not flex but also not be too too heavy check out these handlebars kind of a mid-rise swept back nice ergon locking grips this is all name brand stuff even back to the the brake levers here tool free adjustable reach so you can kind of bring that in a little bit if you're uh, maybe wearing gloves and so your fingers are extra thick and you want to be able to to reach those or maybe you adjust it out because you have gloves and you don't want to pinch your finger in between the lever and the grip itself just, just a, a lot to appreciate, including multiple frame sizes. So they have four frame sizes on this bike. Remember I talked about brakes and braking power? If you're a large person and you're on the large frame, which this is not, this is the medium frame, 18.5 inches, perfect for me. But if you're on the large, you, you might weigh a little bit more too. So it's just nice that they, they kind of upgraded everything on this bike. And the price, you know, you are paying a little bit more. I think it's $28.99 USD or $37.99 Canadian. Yeah, that's right. Is that right, Michael? Okay, yeah, so, you know, not too bad. And you guys are doing more of the direct to consumer model, which yeah, means, yeah, you know, we, they go on their website and... Yep, um, people can um, check out the bikes on our website, homecycles.com, and uh, we can ship to direct to your residence or we ship through uh, a mobile delivery service called Velofix. Now that's nice. You know, these bikes are a little bit easier to put together. They're more durable and reliable because the components are nicer. But if you live locally, if you're somewhere in like the British Columbia area and you just want to drive over and pick it up, that is that possible too? Yeah, of course. So uh, through our factory store in North Vancouver, um, which is near the Auto Mall um, at 930 Harborside Drive. Just right over there, guys, right over there. It's pretty, pretty sweet. I've enjoyed coming there because I get to see like all the different models and all the goodies and the stuff they're working on. So coming back to some of the specs before we get into the extras, uh, this is a, I think it's a 36.3 bolt 14 amp hour, it's like 508.3 or something. It's it's a high capacity uh, battery pack right there. I love how it's internally mounted. It's using 3,500 milliamp cells, is that right? Yeah, that's right. 18650. LG cells. Beautiful, beautiful name brand. Coming back real quick, warranty. What's the warranty on these? Uh, so two year uh, warranty on the drivetrain. Um, we do a lifetime warranty on the frame. Nice. And then uh, in one year uh, uh, warranty on the bike components. Fantastic. So, you know, that's good. And I have seen people who live around here who have several generations back, some of the older Ohm products, and they bring them in and they, they get the help that they need, which is really, really wonderful to see. Also, you're, you're using like sealed cartridge um, bearings, right, on the, on the headset and in the bottom bracket? Yeah, this is an FSA... Um, one of their high-level headsets, um, so it's uh, yeah, fully sealed bearings. Um, Again, with the rain, <laughs> right? So yeah. it's nice to have that. Um, Vancouver's nickname is Raincouver. Raincouver, so. yeah, yeah. So I just want to call those little things out because uh, there's a little bit of a higher price here than some of the other bikes you see online, but you're getting like high-end uh, components and stuff. Thirty point nine millimeters seat post. Uh, which is nice, just a little bit wider, and it gives you the potential for upgrading. We got the Connect. It's like suspension seat post back here. This is an option that they sell. They also sell this awesome basket and the panniers. So Arkel, really nice stuff. Beautiful. We got the gray matching, and this has like the kind of release handle, so you can just set it like this, and when you're lifting it, it opens up the... Um, I don't know what you call those little hangers. You can adjust them quite a bit, and then see that bottom like hook that's what connects right here so it's not flopping around a whole lot when you ride i took this off just because i wanted to get some stock photos of the bike but it's really neat to see this basket is is really sharp looking too it's got a couple handles you can pop that on and off maybe you would take uh I, I don't know if, how frequently i would be taking the battery off if i didn't have to because the range on this is like 60 to 120 miles 
really depending on how you ride it. Yeah, we find, I mean, the, it's quite easy to take the battery out. Um, about... Should we do that? Sure. Do you want to do... Okay, cool, cool. So well, here's the power button for um, activating the display, but you don't need to press that. You can actually power it on from up here, just like the battery, the display itself is removable. And I want to get to that in a minute, but I'm just, I'm just thinking like, what is it like if you ride this bike to work and you actually go further and you want to charge it in the office? So Michael's okay. inserted the so Avis keys right here. The Avis keys and then take off the battery cover. Oh yeah. So there's this, oh, oh dude, I almost forgot. Look at this, the new cover, it's kind of like ribbed. So it's a lot, it's a lot tougher. I didn't feel like this was a huge problem before, but you've got this nice rubber seal along the edges. It just feel it's not flexing when you press this button and slide it off. So kudos to you. That's a nice little upgrade. Yeah, this is the, the final version. So it's got the ribs in the inside and then it's channel for the, um, for the uh, slider bar here. Excellent. So you just basically slide that down to take, take it off the right. bag. I'll hold on to this for you for a second. There's, okay. It's a little bit tight down here with the fender and everything, but he is unlocking it and there's like one step and then there's a second step to take it the rest of the way out. And it's got this little handle. I'm really impressed. You know, Shimano's built a nice integrated battery design. So he's kind of carefully pulling that out to the side. Try not to scrape the fenders. Very good. This is like about six pounds. Um, yeah, this is about six pounds. Um, and uh, for a 500 watt hour battery. Yeah, and you can charge it on or off the, the bike. So maybe if we switch sides here, Michael, I want to show the inside. This is what it looks like. Some pretty thick frame tubing here. There's That's the key. Four millimeters. Four millimeter on the thickness. He's <laughs> geeking out on the specs over here. I appreciate that attention to detail. Uh, right down here is the charging port, right? So you don't have to take the battery off in order to charge the bike, which is important to me. I, a lot of times I like to leave it in actually. Um, however, this is pretty close to that crank arm right here. So you could imagine it's plugged in and you accidentally kick this. There is a little bit of resistance but it's not actually cycling the chain and stuff. So just be careful if you're plugged in here, you don't don't wanna damage that. It does have a nice little you know, rubber cover, but it does require that you reach down further. This is on the non-drive side, uh, drivetrain side of the bike versus the other side. It'd be a little more convenient. Frankly, I'd like the key to be here and the charging port to be here, but you know, they're working with the constraints that Shimano um, provides with their drive system. And that's one of them. This is what the charger looks like. It's like 2.1 pounds. There's the plug. You can just insert, and then there's also this like kind of screw adapter, so you can really more securely connect it if you want. Love that they've upgraded to four amps on this, because in past years they kind of had a two amp standard charger, and you could pay a little bit more for a four amp. Four amp's going to charge the battery faster in like three and a half hours instead of six or seven. I like that. And coming back to where um, Michael and his team have done a really good job working with the Shimano drive system. Down here, there's actually like an integrated speed sensor magnet right there on the disc brake rotor, as opposed to being connected to a spoke and having like a, just sort of a sensor that's external. It's just another thing that could get bumped and look how clean this is. Like, you know, post-mounted brake rotors, internally routed cables, nice big channel covers. This is nice stuff and this is not plastic right here. It appears to be aluminum, is that correct, Michael? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff that is going to last a little bit longer. You've got quite a bit of adjustability back up here at the stem where it's like, it's kind of a riser stem. We've got several several spacers, so we're in kind of the upright comfort body position right now. Uh, and an Ohm branded Ergon saddle, very comfortable. As I said, on the way over here, I'm kind of a comfort guy myself. I, I ride a lot. You got the helmet on and everything, and I don't want my neck and back to be too stressed out with this like aggressive body position but coming back to weight and stiffness and kind of the efficiency, they, they, you skip the suspension on this one because it is more of a cruiser, like an urban bike. Some of their other ones do have suspension. So, you know, they, you've got some choices here on the lineup. Yeah, this uh, this is more of our trekking line. So suspension fork, uh, riding position is a little more forward. So you're a little bit uh, over top, a um, little more sporty posi riding position. Cool. Um, and um, yeah, if you're going like a little bit longer distances, it's nice to have the, the suspension fork. And slightly different display and stuff over here. So I've reviewed this separately. If we come back over to this one, I like this display. It's big, it is removable as we showed earlier. I didn't see, there's not like a USB charging port or anything that comes off of this. That's just kind of separate, but coming back to, you know, it's a fairly healthy size, the 508 watt hour uh, battery pack. To turn it on, you just press that power button here or here, 
it's not two steps, it's just whichever one's most convenient for you. We've got a clock up here, 1258 light indicator. There's actually a battery um, indicator that shows up right there as well on some of the readouts. Current speed, it's set to miles per hour, but we could change it to kilometers per hour pretty easily. And I like this readout a lot because it shows range based on whichever level of assist you're riding in. I've been using normal all the way here. How many miles or kilometers do you think it, it is from there to here? Uh, it's about 10 kilometers, so 10 kilometers. six miles. Not bad, not bad. So I've already shaved off a few. So that comes back to normal being like maybe 80 kilometers when this was fully charged up and that's back to my my estimates so maybe i'm, I'm being a I'm, you know i said was it 60 to 120 i might be a little bit aggressive there i'm a lightweight rider and stuff but you get that feedback real time in addition to what's just kind of a standard five bar battery indicator It'd be nice if that was percentages but with the range readout it's not such a big deal dedicated light button so you can turn that on and off easily so i'm turning it on i want to show you this again what it looks like, really high, bright. It's gonna to point to wherever you're, you're riding, which is important. And then there's those two LEDs we talked about earlier. Excellent job with that. And press this square button here and we can cycle through some of the other menus. Um, so this, this is where it says manual, that has to do with like electronic shifting and stuff. Time, so that's trip time. Uh, average speed, 12.2 miles per hour. Max speed, 27.5, nice. Cadence, I like to see that because you can actually see how fast the motor is responding. And this is a high cadence motor, so it's not gonna drop out on you the way that some of the lower end uh, motors will. Uh, Shimano, Brosa, Bosch, Yamaha. These are, these are nicer mid-drive motors, very efficient, measuring that rear wheel speed, pedal cadence and pedal torque, and then giving you that feedback. This is something that a lot of displays just don't do, that they kind of lack. So for me, that's a big win distance 7.2 miles so i guess it's you know if if that was the trip distance we've gone a little further because we kind of meandered away and i want to show you this too look at this i i've got the sun shining directly on it right now and then this is where the sun isn't and this is called transflective uh lcd display so it is kind of a grayscale, and you can invert those colors just so many cool options with this stuff that you don't see on a lot of other bikes so there's dedicated range readout right there and then we get back to like the triple display. It says off right now. We've got two buttons over here. Very simple, very compact and sleek. If I press kind of top one, it switches to eco, normal, and high. So we got those three levels of assist. Very simple, not, not confusing at all. We can hold, the one secret here is like if you hold the down uh, button for a second, you get walk mode. And that's gonna help the bike like climb up maybe a bigger hill or come out of a basement or something. Maybe you get a flat tire. And I like how there's just a, it's, it's like fairly visible. I think this is 2.75 inches across. I was reading back, uh, back at the shop and it was, it was pretty uh, visible back there too, that light icon. There's one other feature here. If you hold the square, we get into all the different settings. So you can clear, you can adjust the clock, the backlight, the brightness, the beep. That's one thing we turned off. I'm gonna turn it on now just to show you what it sounds like. Oh, there it is. Units, language, font, color. So that's the inversion I was talking about. And adjust, shift advice, shift timing. That comes back to electronic shifting, rear derailleur protection reset. So there's some advanced stuff in here. And then press the, press the box. I think that's pretty much it outside of this really nice bell. Very attractive, very friendly as we've been riding along around here. Everyone's just having a great day, enjoying, uh, enjoying their time at, at English Bay. So I feel like that's, that's a great overview for you guys. Again, I, I, a lot of this is kind of a tours. This is a higher end bike. Of course, the, the biggest downsides are like, you are paying a little bit more for the nicer hardware. Um, the four frame sizes and two colors that cost money because there's just more options that the supplier has to stock But they've got a good reputation been around for a long time Shimano is totally trusted products whether it's the derailleur or the drive system in this case completely It would be nice if if the charging port was up higher uh, and the key was on the other side and stuff But th really those are those are kind of minor things if you're looking for a step through bike something that's really beautiful um, and again, this is a Canadian company, so that's kind of fun. You know, there are a lot of people around here. I've seen this this bike being ridden by people, and that makes that kind of makes me smile because it's like, you know, they probably came in and bought it straight from you. So yeah, we've had uh, so many requests for step through bikes. Um, um, either people that just want something that's easier to get on on and off, or um, they've maybe had knee or hip um, surgeries and um, they don't want to lift their leg up um, high over the bike. 
Yeah, um, especially so. if you have that basket or something like exactly. that. It's, exactly. You know, so um, so just for getting around town, um, this this bike is just so much easier to get on and off, and um, yeah, it's really appealing for for men and and women to ride. Now I have a question for you. Does your does your wife ride this one, or which which bike does she like? Um, she yeah, she rides um, both. I mean, it depends what kind of riding we're doing. Yes, that's true. Um, just for buzzing around town, she'll ride the uh, the cruise model. Have you guys got a rack for your child? Like, are you doing like the car seat thing in the back, the yep thing, or? Yeah, yeah, we we use a uh, to the yep, um, and it's the the clamp on style. Uh huh. Um, so it, it clamps right onto the frame, and uh, those. Um, yeah, this um, specific rack is not um, certified for baby seats, um, <clears throat> but you can get the um, the baby seats that strap onto the frame, and um, those are the types of um, baby seats you can use. I'm surprised to hear you say that because you this is pretty standard. What I see is 25 kilograms, 55 pounds, and yep. Thule has this like side clamping one, and then they have the old ones that fit into the yep window. So I feel like people are. Uh, you're just being extra safe by saying it's not certified, but it would work, right? Yeah, I mean, this this rack is definitely built for the extra stability, but um, um, to to have an officially baby seat certified, it's a it's a, a different uh, strength standard. So, huh. um, yeah, we've been uh, we've just been um, yeah we've been. Uh, Told. Extra sensitive, yeah. extra honest. Um, I appreciate that. We want to. We don't want anyone's kid to get hurt. But I'm. I'm surprised because this is nicer than a lot of the stuff I see on just kind of the, the other like cheaper direct to consumer kind of stuff. And this is a nice rack. And I, one of the things you showed me before was how you've actually integrated where it connects to the frame. Right. Yeah. So there's no like step so, up system here. There's no ugly things that can get loose. I mean, this is really. Yeah, so having this connection system uh, increases the lateral stability by 20%. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, Has anyone but, told you you're a geek, Michael? Because I love it. <laughs> I love yeah. the numbers. <laughs> um, this this is the kind of feature that you'll notice if you load up the, the bike with some panniers and load them up with groceries or whatever yeah. you're carrying. Yeah. And you're you're riding the bike at speed. Uh-huh. And um, that's when you'll notice that uh, the better lateral stability in, in the rack. Okay. And it is set. I like how it's positioned right here. Like, it actually protects your rear light and there's a little bit of side visibility. Since we're geeking out here, and then, you know, the seat post... Uh, it could go even lower than this. You probably have to cut it. I think they just have like a 350 millimeter post, but that's why these bosses are a little bit lower. So the seat can get, you can actually get a pretty good standover, well, I mean, minimum saddle height on this thing. And without colliding with the rack a whole lot, we actually have the saddle slid backwards right now. So what I'm trying to say is like, this is a really well thought out frame and it's unique. It's fairly stylish. These are things that it may, might be harder to appreciate if you're new to the e-bike um, industry, but for someone like me, when I look at these bikes, I'm, I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, so this is our fourth generation frame design. Um, we've been making electric bikes for over 14 years. Wow. And um, yeah, the step through has always been a challenging bike to make it sturdy, um, to make it feel sturdy when you're riding. And um, we've we have our special design here so it starts with using a tapered c-tube oh yeah and then we use a gusset on the c-tube and, and then a gusset on the down tube um that in combination is going to give you the torsional uh, stability is there anything i forgot <laughs> anything we missed because you're yeah banging it out i cord i think you covered it all thank you uh let's hop on these things and take a ride i'm excited to to do some more cruising we got like an instagram photo shoot going on down here beautiful Take oh yeah, good idea, Michael. I'm gonna connect the rack. There you go, got it. And uh, do on the So this is a plusher kickstand, not adjustable length, which might keep it a little bit lighter, a little bit more durable, and then excellent positioning and the wider style of kickstand provisions. It's not hitting that disc brake rotor. Those are all things. It's like minor minor things it's also far enough back that you're not going to get heel strike while you're pedaling like they just this is how it should be and interestingly it's not always like that so let's see take it up to the highest level of assist very smooth natural feeling there's that transflective display again riding across some bumpy terrain here feeling fairly stable and then the uh, pannier in the back. It, there's a little bit of rattling going on, but it's not the end of the world.
everything else seems to be fairly quiet. Cool. Let's take this down to eco mode, see what that sounds like. Actually sounds about the same. And again, my favorite level is just normal. I like to tell myself that I'm normal. <laughs> Riding with no hands here. Just loving the scenery. Beautiful day. Really special to be out here. Okay guys, from here you can see that slightly smaller 42 tooth chain ring. Love the narrow wide setup. They went from 48 to 42. Just make it easier to start and it supports like the lower speeds. It's feeling fine with me. I've actually got up to like that 28 mile per hour on some descents earlier and I was having no problem with that 11 tooth sprocket, but it goes all the way up to 36. So it's a great spread, 10 speeds, nice trigger shifters up front, Shimano Dior. We've got the two way high lever and multi shift three step uh, low lever. This motor is very responsive and sensitive, but it it's uh, quiet, it's compact, and it, it, it's really interesting the way that they've, you know, kind of like integrated it into these frames. I like the way it looks more than some of the other uh, drive systems out there, and it just feels like consistent. The noise isn't just like da da da. It's like, it's pretty consistently like just pretty quiet, fades away. So I wanna let you see that for yourself. I'm in the highest level of assist. Let's do some riding. Super quiet, super smooth brakes. What I was trying to demonstrate there is I was actually applying more or less pressure. And so it's not just cadence, it's like however much pressure I applied, the motor would kick in faster. I wanna shift through some gears this time. I haven't any had any issues with mashing cause I kinda know how to ride. I ease off a little bit before shifting gears, but there's no additional like shift detection system here. Um, and one of the other things that's important to mention is when you turn the, the bike, the display on, don't be pedaling at that point cause it actually calibrates each time. And if you're pedaling while you turn it on, it can kind of throw throw the zero point off a little bit. So just give it a second. Back up to the bike lane, look both ways. Beautiful. Roller blades. Lots of hot dog. <laughs> so that's where we're going, guys. We're gonna go up on that big bridge and cross over. What's this area called, Michael? Uh, that's uh, Lionsgate Bridge. Lionsgate Bridge. There. I've been stuck on traffic on that bridge before going up to Whistler. <laughs> yeah, it's only three lanes, so uh, two lanes one way and one lane the other. But the bike lanes here are so good. Look how wide this is, you guys. And they've got like the little poles and stuff with reflectors. Just a really nice area. I wanted to share that with you because it's, it's just a great ride. How often do you actually ride over there, Michael? Uh, almost uh, daily basis. Uh, this is a relatively new new bike path and um, follows the coast all the way from uh, Deep Cove um, all the way to West Van. Fantastic, man. What a great setup. And they put in these speed bumps like right before the poles and before the crossing so that people, you know, kind of a safety thing. Just very cool. Really special area here. I think we'll get to do some, just a little bit of a hill climb on the way up to this bridge. Here's the hill climb, guys. I've been using normal, and this display is so easy to read. It's got that, that it's like transflective. So in the dark, there's a little bit of a backlight. In the bright, it doesn't get completely glared out. And we are climbing right now. I'm hearing the motor a bit. Kinda got that faint whine. But again, 
to be able to do this whole ride in normal, I'm gonna get better range. You can see the range read out there, 70 miles. Pretty fantastic. That's the traffic I was talking about right there. I'm not breaking a sweat at all, not having to stand up or anything. And these really blend in. They just look like normal bikes, which I really like. Lead on, Michael. Nice protected bike lane here. And even though this doesn't have like a suspension fork, the slightly wider tires, swept back riser bar, feeling really good. Just a gorgeous day. I'm not having to put those fenders to work, but it's nice to have them. Get some rain in the evening. That's where we were. We were just down there, only like five minutes ago. It's awesome. We got some walkers here. Putting that friendly bell to good use. Thanks, man. So that's North Van. We're crossing over to like downtown Vancouver. Lionsgate Bridge. Whoa, seaplane. Check that out. Nice one. It's a sweet. So we're halfway? Yeah, it's about halfway. Sweet, man. I've asked Michael for a couple more tips on this area. I've actually never been up here on a bike. I'm always just like zipping across in my car. So tell me more about what what is this inlet thing here? Yeah, so this is part of the inlet which comes into Vancouver and um, further down um, the stretch here is part of Vancouver Harbor. Okay. Um, but uh, facing out here is West Vancouver. Um, up above all those um, all those properties is a ski resort called Cypress. Oh. Um, there's actually three uh, ski resorts in, in uh, Vancouver. Um, we've got Cypress and Grouse, and then uh, one other one uh, further down called Seymour. Wow. And, and then Wh Whistler, right? Whistler, like yeah, about an hour and a half up the highway. Um, you can get to some super uh, much bigger ski resorts um, uh, about an hour and a half drive from here. And I heard you saying something about this river here. It's like a yeah, salmon this, hatchery. This is the Cap Capilano River, so it's a it's a main um, salmon um, hatchery route. And, cool. Um, so if you go further up, you can actually go and watch the salmon uh, spawning um, during certain parts of the year. Sweet, man. Very cool. So another. Oh, we got a helicopter this time. It was cool to see the seaplane, and I, there's like a port or something. And near the city, I've seen where they, they land and they park. Do you know what that's called? Yeah, it's a uh, it's for float planes and uh, helicopters. Um, cool. So you can take float planes from Vancouver over to Vancouver Island. Um, yeah, it costs obviously a little bit more than uh, taking the ferry, <laughs> but uh, yeah. definitely much faster. You can get over to Vancouver Island within uh, half an hour. It's so cool. Okay, well, let's get back on it. Okay guys, I wanted to pull over and get the camera back out because we're in Stanley Park. That's right. Michael, you're just taking me to these really cool spots. It's foresty, it's beautiful. We're basically at the tip of Vancouver, right? Yeah, just right on the edge of Vancouver City. Um, so um, yeah, this this is a protected park area. There's, uh, there's beaches, there's trails, you can go hiking and um, also biking through. And UBC, isn't, isn't it that way? Uh, yeah, if you follow the coast for another probably 40 minutes, yeah. um, you get to UBC. And I love it. All the you know cars have been really considerate of us, and there's plenty of space to ride, and the speed limit's really low. So yeah, rock on, man. In fact, you said it was 30k, 30k, which yeah. is like 15.5 miles, you know, something around there, miles per hour, 15 miles. That's slow yeah. um, for a car. Yeah, and um, then just 
yeah, this is a park area, so there's lots of people in here uh, walking around and cyclists yeah. as well. So, well, lead on again. Let's let's do this. I just wanted to show you guys because it's so beautiful where we're at here. I hope you get a chance to come and do a ride like this. It's just so smooth, quiet. You know, kind of a rainforest environment here. Super fun. Though it can be a little bit damp, so back to those fenders and slightly wider tires, it's a good idea to take some of the sharp turns slow so you don't slide out. Hey guys. And these motors are really quiet too. It's one of the things I like. You can still hear the birds. Yeah, buttery. Do you come over here frequently, like just for fun? Yeah, definitely. This is part of my, my regular route. Um, come biking through the park and then go into the mountains. And um, it's really relaxing through here. Um, not so much traffic. Yeah. This is like a, this is like a gem, man. It's like a secret back here. I love it. I love uh, cycling close to the ocean. Mm -hmm. Just uh, feel the fresh air. I'm excited to see this special spot that you're taking us to. This is cool. By the way, I'm in the highest level of assist right now. I was climbing the bridge before and kind of keeping up with Michael and just testing out the different modes. Uh, it feels very responsive and very easy to, you know, get up to that 20 mile per hour top speed. Then it fades out smoothly. As you can see, motor noise goes away completely. There's no drag, no resistance. You guys switched to a 42 tooth chain ring, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. The um, um, just to give the the bike a little more responsiveness. Yeah. And um, it um, yeah still allows you to get up to a nice nice cruising speed and uh, have a good cadence. But yeah, you really feel the, the responsiveness of the motor. Also with that 11 to 36 tooth spread, 10 gears, for a bike like this with a 20 mile per hour class one performance, um, 32 kilometers per hour. Wait, no, what's 20 miles per hour in? 32, okay, I, I got it. So that's, that's kind of the, the top speed on these, which makes it class one. You can ride it anywhere. You really don't have, you know, if there's like a bike trail or something, they, they treat this just like a regular bike here. Beautiful park. Isn't that beautiful sunshine? <laughs> Man, and then there's the edge of the city, right? Yeah, just coming up to the edge of the city. Uh, this is called English Bay. And uh, just on the edge of Stanley Park. Cool. Thanks, buddy. I'm getting third person perspective here. I'm handing you off to Michael. You're in good hands. This see, bike just looks cool. Do. It's like I've been standing up shaking it and I'm not getting a uh, frame flex which is one of the things I like to test for so yeah let's do it <laughs> okay guys this is like my favorite bridge and on-ramp so i wanted to show you with michael go for it buddy all right look at this it like curls all around like this uh-huh <laughs> super easy to climb it's beautiful wide enough for pedestrians and then there's this awesome bridge i just think this is so cool so i wanted to show you guys this if you're ever like in west vancouver this is like the most beautiful spot a little hangout nook at the top sweet
fender fender action. I gotta switch gears. Beautiful. Well guys, I think that's about it. I've had a blast hanging out with you and getting all the feedback and geeking out with Michael. For the full written review, see you back at electricbikereview.com where I measure all the specs and stuff. I've reviewed uh, the Quest as well, which is what Michael's riding. And they, you know, they've had a bunch of different bikes. You can see some of their older ones out there as well. Um, and there's a really cool comparison tool in the forums and stuff. So chime in if you have an older bike or maybe you have one of the newer ones. What do you think of the Shimano system? As always, have fun, ride safe, love ya. We'll see you next time.